Oh. Oh. Oh my god. Hey guys, welcome back to the St. Thomas Youth YouTube channel. Today I'm joined with my lovely wife, Alicia. We hope that you guys are doing okay today. Obviously, lots been going on this week with coronavirus. We've been told we have to stay at home now. Schools aren't open anymore. Lots is changing. Um, and because of that, we started this YouTube channel in the first place so that we can continue to do Bible studies. Um, so we hope that you guys really enjoy today's video. We're going to be studying John chapter 11 verses 1 to 41. We are. If you guys want to grab your Bible and then in the description there'll be a link which will send you over to um, a video which is the overview of the Gospel of John. This basically just gives us context as to when the book was written, why and where, who was involved and just gives us a bit more understanding for when we study it later on. So if you just pause this video and we'll be, meet you back in a minute. So welcome back if you just watched that Bible Project video. If you could also read through the passage, that'd be great. It's John chapter 11, verses 1 to 41. We've already read through, haven't we, dear? We have. Um, so we're ready to go. We've got a couple of points that we really want you guys to take home from this passage. What are they? So the first point is the compassion of Jesus. The second point is the claims of Jesus. And the third one is the call of Jesus. Great. So we're going to be talking through all three of those now. Let's start with the compassion of Jesus. Just a disclaimer before we start, Joel struggles to say the word Lazarus. Thanks for that. <laughs> so the first part of this Bible passage is about Jesus' friend Lazarus dying. Now Jesus wasn't around whilst Lazarus died. He'd gone on to the next town already. So Jesus decides to go back to where Lazarus was to raise him from the dead. So when we read this passage, we can see that Jesus is compassionate. All the way through this passage, it's speaking of how Jesus loves us and cares for us. And, and we can see that particularly in verse 8 when it talks about the disciples being confused about why would Jesus go back to a place where he was under threat? Why would Jesus go and risk his life for the sake of someone else? Hey, now we've had a nightmare when filming this. We forgot to press record on a really important bit, so I'm going to fill you in on it now. Jesus going back to see Lazarus was such a crazy act of compassion that even the disciples didn't really understand why he was doing it. In verse 8 it says this, But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago the Jews there tried to stern you and yet you were going back. You see, they tried to kill Jesus the last time he was there. If you've been somewhere and they've tried to kill you, you're not going to go back anytime soon. But Jesus decides to go back anyway to see Lazarus and to raise him from the dead. And this is just like what he did for us on the cross. Jesus sacrificed his own life for us when he died on the cross to save us from our sins. So just like Jesus went back as an act of compassion to raise Lazarus from the dead here, Jesus went to the cross to, for him to die for our sins. It's the same sort of thing. The same compassion that he showed to Lazarus there was the same compassion that he showed to us on the cross as well. Okay, so let me put you back in now. Oh. So the second point, the claims of Jesus. In verse nine to 10, it says this, Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. In this little passage, Jesus is, Jesus is alluding to being the light of the world. If we live outside of a relationship with Jesus, then we're in the darkness. But if we live in relationship with him, then we are in the light which he brings. And we can we can show that by a little illustration, can't we, babe? Well, what do you think it would be like to walk around in the dark when you can't see anything? Well, I think you'd bump into things. I would think do you'd you probably think? hurt yourself. You'd stumble, as it says in here. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll see what that's like. Maybe we will. Right, so oh, the next part of this is the to do the illustration of what it's like to be walking in light compared to walking in darkness. So what we've decided to do is we've put a little course of things on the floor, haven't we? Um, of, of objects which I could um, stumble. stumble upon. Um, so there's a number of objects on here, on the floor, which I'm going to walk over, blindfolded, so I'm going to be in the darkness, I'm going to walk down this alleyway, the, the alleyway? Hallway. Hallway. Um, and but in the darkness you see okay so there's a number of things on here but the worst of all is the advanced mousetrap by rent to kill 
Now, just a disclaimer, we're not sponsored by Rent to Kill. <laughs> um, but if you'd like to check them out, then I'll show you the mouse trap. This is the mouse trap. This thing is a savage. Oh. Oh, I want to pop it on something. Look, no, watch. No, 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 no. Unless he's cardigan. No, 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 no. <laughs> These things snap. No. Let me. Ah! Ah! Ow! I did not mean to do that on my own finger. <laughs> um, but that might hurt. Right. So Five let me. Time. Unless you're gonna fly for me, but just before that, I'm gonna give you a little tour of the object on the floor. Right, so here are the objects. We've got some teaspoons, we've got a bottle cap thing, we've got a uh, key hairbrush. That's quite soft, but it will be a bit weird on the, the old foot. The of the infamous Red to Kill mouse trap. Now let me actually show you how much this thing snaps. I'll show you using a teaspoon. Ooh. Oh gosh, it makes give me a fright every time it snaps. Right. We've also got a roll of sellotape, we've got an old alarm clock which is broken, headphones, cufflink, that's going to go right in my heel, I can tell already. Uh, uh, Doorknob thingy, and um, one of these things that your mum always uses to like close up the couscous with. It's a peg. A peg? A peg. Right, I'll leave that open actually, even crazier. Right, so I'm going to walk over this, blindfolded. Um, try to my best to avoid the things on the floor, um, but we'll see how I do, and hopefully I don't get hit by the mouse trap. So, Alicia, would you like to blindfold me? And Alicia is also going to distribute the objects on the floor in a way where I can't see them, so I don't know where they are. As in, mix them around a bit. How many fingers am I holding up? Seven. <laughs> no. Okay. Perfect. We should be all right then. Right. Should we go? Yes. I'm ready. I'm ready as well. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh, 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 Ow! Oh! Oh! Oh my gosh! And that is what happens. <laughs> is what happens when you walk in darkness. You see, if I didn't have my blindfold on, I would have avoided having a swollen toe. And that's the difference between walking darkness and walking in light. When you walk in darkness, you stumble. But in light, you don't. So the third point that we're looking at is the call of Jesus and the most powerful verse in this passage is in verse 25 where Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? And the, the most incredible thing about this passage is that Jesus has raised a man from the dead. That's crazy. Mm. And that is a miracle. And this was all leading up to um, when Jesus was going to the cross and he was dying for our sins. And then in three days, he rose again, defeated death. And he tells us that if we were to believe in him, we can have that relationship too, that he is the resurrection and the life. And that we too can trust in that and we can believe in the God who saves. It does, yeah. And if we go forward to verses 43, it's the, the moment where Jesus raises Lazarus from the death. It says this, when he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with the strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes, take off the grave clothes and let him go. That's crazy. Imagine being there and seeing a man who you thought was just about to die stand up and walk out and be fully healed. That is the God that we believe in. Yeah, and this is what Jesus continued to do when he was alive in his ministry. He went round and he performed signs and wonders. He didn't just say he was the son of God, but he also proved it to the people around him by performing miracles just like these. So you too can be in a relationship with Jesus 
um, he calls us into relationship and we, um, the God that saves, that heals, that raises people from the dead, we can be in relationship with him. Mm. So if you feel led, um, if you want to pray for a relationship with Jesus, if you believe that Jesus is the son of God, Joel's just gonna lead us in a small prayer to finish. So if you wanna pray that prayer, then echo this in your heart. Father, I am sorry for the sin in my life. I turn away from it and look to you. Jesus, I believe that you are who you say you are. I believe you are the son of God. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you will enter my life. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. Well, if you've just prayed that prayer for the first time, or if you're making a recommitment to God, then please do get in contact with us. If you leave a comment down below, and we'll get in contact with you. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, and if you want to um, press the subscribe button, like this video if you enjoyed it, and also click the alerts if you want to see when we're releasing our next video. Fantastic. Yes. Thanks for joining us today, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.